Let's take our hammer and turn to number 334. 334, won't you stand? First, second, and fourth. everywhere here all right it is it is Wednesday night prayer meeting isn't it so good to see you here tonight and uh, looking forward um, to that I'm looking down there's another note here so I uh, I got that one too all right well I mean I'll be a little tired middle of the week okay well at least you're honest Mike was out there drinking coffee getting ready to stay awake for the service during the preaching. That's probably what it was. And uh, we're not one of those churches that I have, I have seen the church where they had the, like the movie theater seats and had your coffee thing right there. You could put your Pepsi or your coffee and uh, just enjoy the show, I guess. But uh, we don't have that here, all right? We got little bitty ones for communion cups. So unless you bring, well, don't bring, I was fixed to say, unless you bring a shot glass, but that's not good either, all right? Take that off the... the Take that off the live stream there. We do not bring shot glasses to Crow Baptist Church, okay? But uh, on that, well, good to see you. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, ask the Lord to be part of the service. Father, we thank you for this evening, and we thank you for folks that come out on the midweek service. And, uh, Father, just we're just so thankful to be able to gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ and pray for each other, share our burdens, and... Uh, Father, just uh, hurt with each other and rejoice with each other and during our praise time. And then, Father, as we preach the word of God. And, Father, I pray that you just help us. Uh, would you bless us for our efforts of coming out tonight? And, uh, Father, would all that we do glorify you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me give you some, uh, some announcements right here. And I'm going to uh, read this one right here. Um, do we have a, a, we need a notary. Anybody a notary in the church? No notaries, Brother Jim. I was going to say, if you are, Brother Jim would like to see you. I guess we got to have that official document uh, notarized or whatever. But if you know somebody, uh, mention that to Brother Jim, okay? That's what he was uh, wanting to know there. And then we have some activities, a lot of things coming up tonight. Of course, we have a business meeting following the service. And then this Friday, Senior Saints meeting at 1 p.m., and so I hope you'll be here. If you've never been to one, it be a good time to come out and be with us. 1 p.m. is where we have snacks, and so there's not a big meal, but uh, so eat before you come and uh, on that. So that'll be this Friday. And then this Sunday, there is something going on at Crow Baptist Church. I'm, 
something going on starting this Sunday morning. Y'all know what that is? That'd be the revival. And I've been talking to the speaker uh, this week. In fact, I called him, asked him a question. In fact, I, I didn't even think about it. Him and his wife, they do some singing. So they're going to be singing for us. And used to be, uh, I think he has two or three daughters and a son. And now they're, off, they're all off on college. So he says, well, just me and my wife. So we'll give it a good try. But we used to sing as a family. And so um, he'll be here and they'll be doing that. So look forward to that, Brother Jake DeAndre. And uh, Sunday will be the normal times. And so we'll have Sunday school. We'll have preaching service. And Sunday night, we'll have it at 6 o'clock. And then Monday through Wednesday, we'll have uh, services at 7 p.m. And uh, we won't have, I will say this, we won't have any children's ministries, uh, things for the younger ones. We've tried it a little bit, and sometimes it was only one or two of them. So we'll let them sit with you uh, Monday through Tuesday. Possibility, we may do something on Wednesday, all right, because we usually have a few more young people show up. And we'll let you know as we get closer to that, okay? And then, uh, speaking of the, the revival speaker, they are going to bring a uh, uh, their own uh, place to stay, RV or something like that. I forget what what he called it, but they don't have a, a uh, they don't have a vehicle. And he asked if it was a, a possibility if somebody could let them borrow a car for those days that they're there, and uh, so that they can kind of travel during the day and travel around. So if you have a vehicle. That because uh, I don't think he wants to drive that big motorhome ar- around everywhere once they get it set up down there, and uh, if you have a vehicle that you would be willing to let him borrow, that would be great. Okay, and so see me afterwards, and that way I can do that. They're coming in on Saturday, and uh, I can let him know that. And then Saturday, May the fourth, will be the mother-daughter uh, lunching at 11:30. There is a sign-up sheet in the foyer. You say, "What are we having?" I don't know right now. You say, "Where are we getting it from?" I don't know right now. Okay, so uh, that will be that way. All right, and so looking forward to a to a good service and. Ladies, it, it will be something. You will not have to bring your own food, okay? And we'll have, we'll have it there, all right? All righty, brother, brother Rick. I, I get mixed up. Sometimes it's Brother Johnny. Sometimes it's Brother Rick. But tonight it's Brother Rick. Can't tell you apart. Yeah. So let's turn to 438. Why don't you stay in place? request speaking of going to heaven and no sickness and no death I was talking to Miss Hazel Brewer this afternoon and uh, 
she was she's just excited to be to go and she just wanting to be there and uh pictures of dick up in her room she looks up there it's one of them when he was in his 20s and then one of them when he's in his 90s so uh she's trying she's just remembering that and uh she said won't be no more places like this will there preacher and i said no there sure won't and you know that's a great thought isn't it and uh but keep praying for her she's very weak and every week i go by there's two ladies i go visit uh, on on Wednesday is kind of the way the schedule works out, and one of them is Miss Hazel, and every time I go by to see Miss Hazel, she's weaker. And every go, time I go by to see Miss Eileen up at Hilltop, she's doing better. And so that's just how the Lord is 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 working during this time. And so I don't know why and all the reasons about that, but let's pray for these folks. Pray for Robin uh, Bragg as she has her heart surgery on May the 9th. Uh, good to see Miss Jerry here, but keep praying for her, all right? And uh, I pray it's getting better each day, but I'm sure it's moment by moment on some of that. And uh, then Eileen Mills, which we mentioned just a minute ago, and she said, make sure to tell the church, thank you for praying. She's no longer having to take dialysis. And so she was doing that three times a week. And uh, so praise the Lord for that. And then uh, bro, there, there's a guest here with us today. Brother Charlie, amen, brother. I thought you'd try to, be, I know you wanted to, man, man, I know you wanted to be here the very first week you got out, but uh, praise the Lord, Brother Charlie's uh, back from having open heart surgery, and then uh, pray for Teresa Lilly and uh, possible back surgeries, and then uh, had a, several requests turned in here. Um, Debbie O'Dell says pray for the three Reigns boys that lost both parents in the vehicle accident on Sunday. Uh, now, are they younger boys? I, the, the oldest one is at least 22. And 20, the other two are older. Okay, so maybe teenagers around there. So, yeah, that was a bad accident. Some of our folks got caught up in that, uh, on that. But uh, pray for that family. And then Miss Diane says pray for Patsy Covey family after her passing. And, uh, and then Diane will have some tests tomorrow to try to figure out why she keeps getting COVID. And she's had it five or six times. And so uh, she'd like to know why And uh, on that. Now, you don't have to stay what She ain't got the plague or anything, okay? And she, she don't share it often with Johnny, thank the Lord. And, uh, but d let's do pray. They're not real sure what goes on. And some people just have seen, seem to get it more than others. And uh, the good thing is we don't hear about it much. And that, that's a good thing, all right? And uh, people still get it, though. Uh, then uh, Steve and Mary Ann have a friend. Uh, Carl Hardy's son-in-law uh, needs a kidney transplant. In fact, uh, this is a pastor. He's actually the one doing the sheetrock back here in our building. And his son-in-law needs a, a kidney transplant. And so pray for him. And then Bertha has some here. Says pray for my uh, siblings. Uh, a lot of different health issues. Her nephew's nieces, their families for salvation, rededication, and health issues. And then the Templeton family from uh, Beaver, uh, health uh, and salvation, spiritual needs. Pray for our shut-ins, and uh, don't forget about them. We've got a list of them on the, on the sheet there, the prayer sheet. And then she has some unspoken requests. And then uh, her cousins here in the USA, England, Wales, Canada for salvation. So a lot of health issues and spiritual issues issues there and then let's don't forget to continue to pray for N.A. Pennington he's still not doing it he's at home but he's still not doing very well and you haven't seen uh, Phyllis because she's having to stay right with him she can't leave him like she was doing before and so you pray pray for her. some of you ladies may want to give her a call encourage her and uh, so that she don't feel like she's been forgot about that happens sometimes by the way we don't think about that and then we've got some men that are either taking cancer treatments like Doug Elliott and Stephen McAllister's. In fact, the McAllister's, as far as I know, they're in North Carolina again this week. And then Brother Larry Jessup, he is finished with his treatments, but he's still very, very weak. So pray for him and all the things that go on with these uh, treatments that take place and how that affects you. It not only kills the, the bad cancer cells, but it, it, it weakens you in a lot of other ways. And you folks that's dealt with that know what we're talking about, okay? Any other requests that uh, we didn't mention? Yes, ma'am. Um, mm -hmm. um, and, 
he has cancer. This is a gentleman that they, him and his wife have traveled from out of state here and they do some things uh, for sowing for souls and uh, has cancer. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's pray for Miss Jerry's grandchildren. All right. Anybody else? All right, men, if you'll come at this time to receive the offering. And uh, thankful for our faithful giving and good stewardship and um, all the money that's given on uh, Wednesday nights, of course, goes to our ministry, Sowing for Souls, and uh, postage does not go down. It keeps going up. It's kind of like your taxes. They never go down. They just keep going up. Amen. And so... Um, on that. Well, let's go to Lord in prayer. And Mike, if you'd ask God to bless the offering, but uh, ask Him to work in the these requests that were made. Heavenly Father, we've just gathered together in the middle of the week here, and so many prayer requests have been spoken. Some on our prayer list, Lord, we pray for each and every one of them. Pray that uh, our our brothers and sisters would be careful to take these lists home with them, and throughout the week uh, as they read and know what's going on with these people, that they would uh, pray wisely for them. I thank you, Lord, for uh, Chad and uh, Dale and other uh, men and women that are working with the children. Lord, I pray that you'd uh, give them a message that the children need to hear. I pray for Pastor Baker, Lord, as he uh, preaches tonight, that you'd fill him with the Holy Spirit. And thank you that he is a compassionate pastor, Lord, and a knowledgeable in your word. And I pray that we in the congregation would uh, heed the warnings that are given out and claim the blessings and cling to the promises that are in your word. More than anything, Lord, that we'd be uh, willing to share your word, what you've done for us with others we come in contact with. Thank you for the offering we're about to take, Lord, that it would be used uh, to support sowing for souls. And as we've said, read so many prayer letters from other missionaries, how uh, just beneficial this is and uh, how it's appreciated. And I pray that you'd be with Daphne and the other ladies that uh, uh, diligently work on this, that you'd give them uh, strength to ca carry on. I just pray now for the rest of this evening, Lord, that you'd be with us with the business meeting to follow, that we'd do things decently and in order. Thank you again for being able to gather together here on Wednesday night. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Man, all right, let's turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 9. And once you found your place there, just keep that. And I uh, want to give you an opportunity, if anybody does have any a praise or a testimony that the Lord has answered a prayer, done something for you this week, I want to give you that opportunity to do that this Wednesday evening. Anybody like to do that? Uh, yes, sir, Brother Banks. Amen. Amen. I don't look forward to getting older. I don't know if I can handle the pain that comes along with the arthritis and the bad backs and other things. So I'm praying the Lord just comes back. All right. That, that'll be the best thing. I'd like to see that. All right. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Brother Charlie.
Good to see you, see you back this evening. And uh, feel that little twinge in your chest. You don't know what's gonna what's gonna lead to. So, Miss Robin, we look forward to you giving a good testimony too, sister. And uh, others have been through that. Some of you, I've been to there when you've had open heart surgeries, and the Lord has brought you through. And so we're very thankful. Anybody else have a testimony or praise they'd like to share tonight? Thank you for sharing those. All right, we're going to read the first six verses of Proverbs chapter 9. And you will find, uh, and you can stand, and we'll read the first six verses, but you're going to find the name of the next person we're going to cover that the book of Proverbs talk about, and that is the simple. And so let's read that. It says, Wisdom hath builded her house, she hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts, she hath mingled her wine, she hath also furnished her table. Sounds like wisdom wants people to come over and visit. She hath sent forth her maidens, she crieth upon the highest places of the city. And here's what she cries. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come eat of my bread, drink of the wine which I have mingled, Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of the understanding. Wisdom. God doesn't want the simple to stay simple. He wants them to have wisdom and understanding. And so let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening that you've given us. We pray that you'd bless the reading of God's word. Bless us as we go through the book of Proverbs, looking at some verses that talk about the simple. And Father, I pray that you would bless. And then as we move on to our... Uh, business meeting, quarterly business meeting, would you give us discernment? Would you help us to have unity as a church as we vote on some things tonight? We'll praise you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you can be seated. Well, in the book of, of um, uh, Proverbs, in fact, in the book of uh, ninth chapter, the simple is mentioned uh, twice. Verse 4, whoso is simple... And uh, let him respond to wisdom. Let him get some understanding. And then there's a, there's a simple woman, and we'll talk about her in a little bit. But verse 13 says, a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. Now, there's no woman in this church, as far as I know, like this woman. Uh, this would be a woman of the street. And so, but she's simple. She don't, and that's the way the Bible describes her. And so uh, we've covered the wise, we've covered the fool, and tonight we're going to cover the simple. Now, here's the thing about the simple. Not many, I don't, I'm just saying in a church setting especially, I would say, I would hope that most of you, if not all of you, my prayer would be that all of you be wise, okay? I don't think we have any fools. Could, but I don't think we do. I don't know of anybody. All the ones I know of and, and here at Crow, they, I wouldn't consider them to be the foolish person. And yet, uh, I'm not going to tell you, but uh, there are times that all of us are a little simple. I'm going to explain what that is in just a moment, but there are times where all of us, and, and, uh, and tonight, maybe not as much in this auditorium, and it could be in this auditorium, but I promise you in the classes that are being taught outside this auditorium, there are the simple. They're born that way. They're born foolish. The Bible talked about that, the rod of correction, drive of foolishness, from a child, and uh, but they are born simple too, without understanding, with making decisions as a person that is simple. And so we hope that biblically, we're talking about biblically now, okay, that they will mat- they will become wise, and that that's the goal. But most, a lot of young people are simple, and there are adults that are simple. There's mom and dads that are simple. And so first of all, we want to give you an explanation. Hey, who is this simple person? And so a definition of the word simple, when it talks about here all through the book, in fact, all through the book, every time the word simple is mentioned, it's the same, it's the same uh, word and has the same meaning. It means to be open and roomy. Now, simple, open and roomy. There's a lot of space between their ears. Open and roomy. That's the idea there. It's the idea of being empty-minded. It's the idea that the truth of God's word is not in there having an effect on how they act and the decisions they make. And so the actual definition is to be open and roomy. It also, a secondary definition is one who is easily seduced because of not having any, any truth 
uh, in, in their mind and in their heart. Because they don't have that truth, because they don't act on that truth, they are easily seduced by this world and by evil people. And so that's the definition. So there are some people that have minds that are open and roomy. There's a lot of room in there, okay? Now, one of the things that we want to do as parents and as adults, especially with our young people, is to put a lot of God's truth in there, right? And that'll help them not to be simple. That'll help them but to be wise. Well, here's a description of them. Let me give you several things as the, as the book of Proverbs go. First of all, uh, they have no convictions. They have no solid steadfast convictions within them because their mind is open to anything uh, and and they can be influenced to go in any direction now the thing about the simple is there's a good thing the positive thing is good people can influence them in a good way and you can influence them with good things and they'll follow it here's the negative if another group is around them that's evil and wicked they'll follow them just as easily as they'll follow the godly they're simple. They're very, very unstable in this way. They, that you never know who you're going to get. Okay? That might describe a teenager. I don't know. But you never know who you're going to get from day to day. It depends on who they're around. depends on what circumstances are going on. And if they're around a crowd like tonight, I'm sure they're, they're acting wise tonight. Okay? I'm sure you're acting wise tonight. I, well, I hope they're acting wise tonight. Okay? But, it, but maybe at school tomorrow they'll be around another crowd. It'll be a different crowd. It won't be, the crowd. It won't be like everything's about the Bible and about God. No, it'll be a crowd. Maybe there's some cursing going on. Maybe there's some bad language going on. Maybe they're talking about some, some crude things. And all of a sudden, that simple person will go from, hey, I'm going to be talking about God to, hey, I'm going to be talking about something that's against God. And so this is the way the simple is. They lack biblical wisdom and understanding they just don't have it turn to proverbs chapter 7 that's just a couple chapters back from the where we're just looking proverbs chapter 7 and verse 7 here here's here's a description of of the uh, simple person and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man and here's a here's a description of him void empty of understanding. Now, when we read the understanding in the Bible, it's not talking about two plus two. They don't know what that means. They're not talking about they don't know history or English or whatever. That's no, talking about biblical God's truth, biblical truth that helps dictate their lives in making decisions of right and wrong. And so they lack this wisdom, this understanding. They are empty. They are void of the biblical understanding. They may know some facts about the Bible, okay? They, they may know some, th you could ask them some questions about who got swallowed by a whale, and it's not Noah, it's Jonah, okay? And uh, so, hey, you can ask all kinds of different questions. You could ask, hey, where's this book of the Bible found? They may be able to tell you that, all right? But they are void in, a, in the application of the truth of God's Word. They know the facts, but they haven't made it part of their life where they're making decisions on this. Now, they're not like the fool. They haven't rejected God's word. They haven't said, I don't want anything to do with God's word. They're simple. They're just not living by God's word. And so they, they may know some truths, but their decisions and actions are not influenced by that. I, I, know, I know people that go to church. Every, I, I've known of people that go to church all the time. They go to church on Sundays. They go to church even on Wednesdays. But when it comes time to make a decision of whether this is right or whether this is wrong, they, they don't... They don't make it because they have conviction of their heart and because they have the truth of God's word in their life and they say, I'm going to always do this because this is what God says. No, it's dictated by the situation, by the group that's around them. And so that's the simple person. And uh, they have no solid convictions. They have a lack of biblical wisdom and understanding. They, they fail to see the danger of sin. The simple person will live their life in the present. It's all about now. It's not about, they, don't, they have a hard time seeing anything past right now. And uh, so they live for the things of the flesh and the things of the world that are right now, not necessarily eternal things. Turn to Proverbs chapter 20, 23, Proverbs chapter 20, uh, 22, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 3. Now, you don't have to turn here, but in Proverbs 27 verse 12, it's the same exact word-for-word -word verse. Evidently, God's trying to put some emphasis on this, but 
Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 3 says this, A prudent man, a wise man, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. So they say, see, they, hey, they're, they're getting in a situation, they're living their life, they come here, oh, there's sin coming up, I'm going to avoid that. I'm going to stay away from that sin. I, I realize, I know exactly, if I go and commit that sin, I'm looking to the future. I know what will happen. There's consequences. Hey, when I do wrong, go against God, hey, there's, there's, you, you reap what you sow. A wise, a prudent, a wise man understands that. But look at the last part. But in contrast, the simple pass on and are punished. They keep just going right towards it. They, they don't, you know, hey, they don't see it and say, oh, that's sin. Now, if I commit that sin, I'm going to be displeasing God and disobeying God. If I disobey God and don't please God, then God's blessings are not going to be in my life. There's going to be chastisement. There's going to be things that take place because I've chose to sin. The simple man, man, he's just going on. There's sin. He does it. He commits it. He's not even thinking about what's going to happen. And so that, that describes a lot of people. In this world, even people that claim to be believers, but they fail to see it. They live in the present. The, the, the pleasure of the presence is what they live for. Samson, what are you living for? I'm living for right now. Get her because she pleases me well. Then I'm going to go down here and get another one. Now, what do you have a problem with? Women. Women, a woman after one, three women. And the last one, Delilah, she got the best dom, didn't she? But, hey... He didn't see his eyes being put out. He didn't see himself becoming a slave to the Philistines. He didn't see himself one day standing there being mocked and made fun of. He didn't see himself committing suicide. He didn't see all that. All he said was, I like what she looks like right now. She pleases me right now in the present. I want that. What, what did, what did um, uh, Esau, what did Esau do? Well, Jacob, man, he knew, he knew Esau's uh, temperament. He knew his characteristics. So he said, hey, Esau comes back. He's tired. Now, he's not about to die, but he said he's about to die, right? I'm, about to, I'm, about, I'm, I'm so tired from out being out and had no, nothing to eat. I'm about to die. Sounds like a teenage boy, you know. And, uh, but that's not what happened. And Jacob said, all right, sell me your birthright. You sell me your birthright. Something is way in the future right now. But you sell it for a bowl of beans in the presence. In the present, I got a big bowl of beans, and they're hot, Esau. Don't, don't, you, want, don't you want a bowl of beans that is hot? Oh, man, you're, about to, you're hungry right now in the presence? Oh, I'll take that. All right, you can have my birthright. He's a simple man. He's a simple person. Why? Because he's thinking about right now. They live in the present. And one of the things they live for is the pleasures of the presence, and we'll see that in just a moment. And they are easily deceived. I mean, they are gullible. They are naive. Turn to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15. That's why they're uh, persuaded so easily by people to go in different directions because they'll believe everything. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15 says this, The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. The simple believeth every word. They're gullible. They're naive. They're easily deceived. I mean, because they believe everything. So when they're over here with their friends and their friends say, hey, let's go do this. This is going to be the result and everything. Oh, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Let's go. They, they don't think for themselves as much as they just trust everybody else, that the group they're with. They don't think for themselves. They act on what others think. Peer pressure determines much of their choices and their actions. Advertisers, advertisers. Y'all know what advertisements is? Okay. They target the simple. Yeah, that's for the simple. If, if you're a wise person, you already know here's right, here's wrong, here's what works, here's, you know, I mean, you got some wisdom, okay? So what they're out there doing is trying to sell things to the simple. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to meddle a little bit with weight loss okay y'all mind if I do that I need to lose a little bit myself but here's a good illustration advertisements you'll see them all over the place take this pill take this gummy that's the big thing going on right now look at all these Hollywood stars that's lost all this weight and here's the thing about it 
you eat this, you take this pill and drink and take drink this juice or do whatever it is. If you take it, you don't have to exercise, and you keep eating just like you want to, and you'll lose weight. And the simple go, let me spend a hundred dollars on that bottle, right? I know some of you are looking down like I did that. Oh no, no, nobody looked like that. All right, but they do it all the time, right? The simple, they they trust people overly trust people even bad people and uh so that's not that's not good and so there's a lot of peer pressure put put on the simple and they fall into peer pressure and so they're easily deceived now turn to proverbs chapter 7 and i want to look at this passage because this particular passage proverbs chapter 7 gives a great example of the simple now it just happens to be in the bible and I didn't pick out this illustration, but God put it in here, okay? Inspiration of the, of the, of the Word of God. Verse 7 says this, or verse 6, For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement. I looked out the window, all right? And, and Solomon is given under inspiration of God, given an illustration about a simple person in, 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 in the illustration. And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. So he's given an illustration, uh, an example of how a simple person lives their life. Okay, this happens to be a young man. It's going to involve a woman, a bad woman. Okay, but you could apply it to any decisions of life. It's just going to be a decision whether I'm going to sin or whether I'm not going to sin. Whether I'm going to be simple and make a terrible decision based on the present right now or whether I'm going to make a decision based on, hey, there's a lot of consequences that come with this kind of decision. If I give in to this temptation, if I do this, this is going to be terrible. And so it involves a woman. So let's look at several things about this woman because it says uh, passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house. Now, we know who this is because verse 5 says, talking about wisdom, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger with flatter with her words. The strange woman is not somebody who's got weird hair. The strange woman is not somebody who's got one ear a lot bigger than the other ear, and you look at her and go, that's a little strange. No, the strange woman is strange to you because she's not supposed to be with you. She's not your wife. She's not, she's, she's not yours. She's strange, okay? That's what that's talking about, okay? And uh, so he's passing. This simple man is young man, void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. So she has a corner that she likes to hang out at and went the way to her house. And when is it? Hey, her character is this. She likes hanging out on the street corner and she likes hanging out under the cover of darkness, in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark of night. So, y'all getting the picture here? There's this woman. She hangs out on the street corner. She comes out at night. Sound like anybody? Well, let's keep reading. And behold, there met him a woman, and it's going to tell exactly who it is, with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. Tricky, buddy. She's deceitful. But it's a woman that's wearing the attire of a harlot. Now, what does that mean? She's advertising in the way she dresses. She's dressed a certain way that she is advertising to the men that come by her corner that she's for sale. And there can be some temporary, present pleasures. And we're talking about a harlot, a prostitute. So, the simple man, first of all, he goes towards that anyway. So he goes to, through the street near her corner. I, I believe it's the illustration. He does it on purpose. He don't see the danger of the sin. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. In fact, this is a woman that's married, by the way. Now, let me just come back to that attire of a harlot because sometimes we forget this. How we dress tells who we are. If I'm going down, if I'm going into Beckley and I'm up there near Sam's or Walmart area and this guy walks up and he's got on a uniform 
an army uniform, okay? He's wearing a uniform, right? He's walking up. What can I conclude? He's part of the what? The armed services. He, he it looked like the army. Or even more specific, he's in the Navy. He's in the Marines. I, you can tell by the uniform, right? Because the way he dresses identifies him with who he is. It's the same thing with this harlot. The way she dressed identified her with who she was. Now today, I don't know how she dressed. I don't know what the dress was. It's different than today, okay? But she wore something that identified herself that she was this prostitute that was, was selling her body for pleasure. Now, here, here's the thing about it. Today, what would it be? It'd be too high, too low, or too tight, wouldn't it? Y'all agree with me? That's the way they, they would dress? Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. Talking to dads that have daughters. Dads that have daughters. There's a couple in here. Then as your young people grow up, especially as they become teenagers, they're going to want to dress a certain way. And the world pushes a fashion on them that would be, I consider it, the attire of a harlot. Now, I just wanted to mention, dads, you're responsible. Help your young girls. Because you don't want them walking out the door saying, I'm for sale, right? You don't want them to be identified with that kind of thing. And there's a lot of pressure on them. So I just, I just wanted to, to mention that. And she's sh shameless. Because look at, look at verse 12. Now she is without. Now in the streets. I mean, she's pursuing and life and wait at every corner. She's, she's moving around now. She's not just at one corner. She's moving around. So she caught him and kissed him with an impudent face and said unto him, Hey, she is, she's bent on getting this young man. Well, who's going to go down there? The wise man? The wise man's not even going to be down in that area, right? But the simple man would. The one who don't have any understanding. The one who is void of wisdom, who's, who lives his life on the present pleasures of this world. And so, hey, who is it? It's the simple. Her client is a simple man, easily seduced. So she starts making some claims. The Bible says, verse 13, she said to him, she grabbed him, and she starts saying some things. What did she say? I have, I have peace offerings with me. Oh, she's getting religious on this guy. You're talking about sweet talking. She, I mean, she's even bringing God in this thing. This day I have paid my vows, therefore came I forth to meet thee. Hey, you're just the exact one I want. You're the only one I came out here to meet. And that simple guy goes, yeah, it must be me. I'm so good looking. It wasn't anybody else you was waiting for. No, it was just, just me. Diligently to seek thy face, and I found thee. Hey, I finally found the man of my dreams right here. Of course, she found the man of her dreams the night, a couple of nights before, too. Deck my beds with covering and tapestries with carved works and fine linings of Egypt. I perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloe, cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with, with loves. You know what it sounds like to me? She's promising pr pleasures, right? We understand what's going on here. She's she propositioning this young man that's a simple man. He don't have enough understanding to stay away from her. And at the same time, not only is it promising pleasures, she's saying it's pleasures without any penalty to it. In fact, look at verse 19. For the good man is not at home. He's going on a long journey. My husband's gone. He's off. He ain't coming back tonight. Hey, we can commit all this sin, and we'll never have a problem. He have taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. I know when he's coming back. He's coming back next week on Monday, and he's not here tonight. You come on, I ain't fulfill your pleasures. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield with the flattering of her lips. She forced him. Now, here's the situation. This is the situation the Bible describes. A simple man does not have enough understanding to know that this is trouble. This is sin. There will be consequences. In fact, as we read here, there are consequences. Look at verse 22. He go after her straightway. I mean, he jumps right on that. I mean, he, he says, that's what I want. Here's my money. I mean, here's what's going on. As an ox, wait a minute, it starts to change now. I thought it was sweet talking. I thought it was promises of pleasure with no, no penalty to it. Oh, he goeth as an ox to the slaughter? 
death or as a fool to the correction stocks? I mean, that this oh man, this took a turn right here. My, my desires, my dream of tonight just became a nightmare. Till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasteneth to the snare and knoweth not that is for his life. How many of y'all ever gone fishing? I go fishing every once in a while. Listen, you know what I use when I go fishing? It's not a hook with nothing on it. I don't throw out a hook and say, hey, fish, hope you bite that hook. Now, I was at the beach one time, and we had, was catching some fish off the thing, just having some gold hooks. That's the only time I ever done that. We had a bunch of gold hooks, just jigging it up and down on the pier. And them dumb fish were biting the hook, all right? And became my supper, all right? But, but hey, when you go fishing, what do you do with that hook? That, that's, that's the pain. That's, that's what's going to catch you, right? That's the consequences. So what do you do with the hook? You cover it up with something. Cover it up with some bait. Sometimes it might be a worm. Sometimes it might be one of them Helger mites. I don't get them Helger mites. I went with uh, Sam a couple years ago, and one of them bit the fire out of me, and I'm not touching them things anymore, all right? I don't care how much they catch fish. But I tell you what, you put something on that hook, don't you? You cover that hook up, and all of a sudden that fish says, Woo, look at that float, floating by me in the new river. There it comes. Ooh, there, I better hurry up because my buddies are trying to get over to it. So what does that fish do? I want a meal. Goes over there, grabs that meal, and becomes a meal, right? I mean, he gets, he gets put in a frying pan. Why? Because he wanted that, that worm, that helger mite, that whatever it was, he wanted it. Just like a simple. You know what? The simple is no smarter than a fish. Because the simple just goes after sin and doesn't see the dangers and just, just does that. And when it happens, he, he saw the pleasures, but he didn't see none of the pain that was going to be coming. A dart. Strike through your liver? Oh, goodness. You're in a snare. You're in a trap. Knowing not that is for his life. Death is fixing to take place. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline from her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Hey, this, this is a bad woman right here. Her house is the way to hell. Going down to the chambers of death. Now this guy, he's simple. All he saw was what? The pleasures. He did not see any of the consequences. He did not see any of the pain. He did not see any of the penalties that would come because of his decision. Sounds to me like a man who becomes unfaithful to his wife. Oh, she starts flirting with him at work. And they start talking. And his wife's been kind of mean to him lately. And his wife ain't complimented how he's lost about a pound and a half. Wife didn't notice. And this woman says, oh, you're looking good today, Bob. I tell you, not you, Bob Stewart, okay, but uh, you're looking good, Bob. And, uh, you, you know, hey, you lost some weight. Yeah, I thought you had. I mean, they, hey, and there's women out there. Ladies, there's women out there looking for your husband, okay? You say, not my husband. You don't know. And, yeah, they're out there looking. I tell you, out there working and, and uh, all of a sudden, all, all of a sudden, it's, hey, I'm going to lunch today. You want to go with me? Well, yeah, I enjoy talking to you. And then all of a sudden, you got to lunch. And boy, from there, I tell you what, if you're not careful, a man will make a decision, become unfaithful to his wife, and all it is is about temporary, present pleasure without thinking about his kids, without thinking about his wife, because he'll come back and say, I love you. I, how? I'm sorry, I love you. I, I, you know, it wasn't my... You know, but he didn't think about any of the future. He just thought about right now. He's simple. Hey, you know what? The beer advertisers, the beer companies count on the simple. Because they put out all them commercials, don't they? This is great. Don't get any better than this. This is the party lifestyle. Look at all these good-looking women. Look how to make you feel. It'll be a party time. And they don't show you the drunkenness and the broken homes. And the wives with the busted lip and the black eye. And the children who are scared to death to be around their dad. They don't show you none of that, do they? Why? Because they just want to show you the temporary. And the simple go right to it. And I tell you what, you've got to be careful about that. Boy, I tell you, we've got to be careful about sin. I hope you're not simple. I hope you're wise. But the good thing about it is, now here's the thing about, about the fool and we're going to talk about the scorner in a couple weeks. But the fool and scorner are not very teachable. 
You just cannot teach them. They have rejected God's word. Hard to teach them. But here's something about the simple. They are teachable. You, you can help them. In fact, there's hope for the simple. Turn, look at Proverbs chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. We read that. Proverbs 9 says, Wisdom hath built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. We read that. Verse 4, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. Hey, come to wisdom. Evidently, a simple person can become wise. They can have wisdom. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Hey, if you want wisdom and understanding, you can have it. And if you're the simple, you can get it. In fact, you, will, you have the ability, there's hope that you can respond to that. They can be persuaded. If they be persuaded, easily persuaded to be going in the wrong direction, let the right people come in their life and persuade them to go in the right direction. Do you know that we probably have teenagers that come on Wednesday nights that have had some people influence them and persuade them through peer pressure to go in a bad direction? And yet tonight they're in a, they're in a room with a man that's having an influence on them that is hopefully teaching them how to go in the right direction. I hope that influences them. Listen, I, I, it's a good thing to have your young people here tonight because this world is trying to influence them, and they are simple, most of them. And they, they got to grow up to be wise. They gotta, they, but you have them here. Boy, if I had grandchildren, I'd try to have them at Crow Baptist Church on Wednesday nights. Good program back there. Our, young, our, our elementary group especially would love to see some more kids show up. They've all gotten older. There used to be a pile on back there in the elementary, and now there's a pile on in the teen rooms. Why? They got older. Hey, sure would like to have some more kids come, and, boy, they need to not be simple. They need to be taught to be wise, and they can be persuaded. They can be influenced to go in the right direction because they're simple. And yet, here's the thing about if you guide and direct them in the way of the Lord, they become wise. They won't go back to being simple. There's hope. There's help for the simple. Sim, uh, simple. Do you know the Bible says that if you correct a scorner, that the simple will learn from that? You know correction of wrongdoers help teach the ones who are kind of following along? Y'all, uh, we used to have a principal, and uh, he used to always make this statement. He said, here was his thing. He was an older man, and he had a lot of wisdom, and, and Dr. Barry was a, was a great man. And I remember one time he says, what we got to do, I was, we was talking about a situation. There was a group of boys, about 10 of them. Boy, they was causing all kinds of problems. He said, and he said something, help, help teach me as working with the youth. He said, not all of them are, are real bad. He said, but there's a lead buffalo in there. Now, we all know who the leader of that group was. It was putting pressure to, to lead that group in the wrong direction. And he, used to, and he started referring to the lead buffalo. And here was his phrase, if we shoot the lead buffalo, rest on will come in line. I didn't say that we should shoot kids, you know, teenagers, but what he was saying is if you correct and get the lead one, then those simple ones will see that and they'll watch and they'll learn. That's not what I should do. There is consequences to my decision. You know, if we'd stop, I, honestly, in our country, if we'd start prosecuting shoplifting and public destruction of property, they'd stop it. Why? Because you, you, now you don't get them all. There's ringleaders in that stuff, right? You get, hey, prosecute them. And them simple ones will say, I'm not being a part of that. I didn't like being in jail. I saw so-and-so go to jail. I don't want to have any part of that. Well, that's what the Bible teaches, by the way. Turn to Psalms chapter 19, because the most important thing you can do for a young person is what? Psalms 19, and then we'll turn to one more and we'll be done. Psalms 19, verse 7. One of the greatest things you can do is what you've done tonight if you brought your young people. The law of the Lord, Psalms 19, verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. All these words are talking about the scriptures, the truth of God's word. The testimony of the, of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Do you know the Bible can make wise the simple? That's where true wisdom comes from. I'll read this one, Psalms 119, verses, verse 130. Psalms 119, 
verse 130 says this, The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. One of the greatest things that we can do is to tell people about the word of God. Now we're going to, sure, salvation, that's the most important thing. But then after they're saved, whether it be young persons or people or adults, the most important things that can happen in a person's life who's got some tendencies of being simple is to learn the truth of God's word. It'll make them wise. It'll give them understanding. And there is hope for the simple. Now the simple, if you just leave them to themselves, they're going to they're usually follow that fool and that scorner in the folly. That's why parents, be very careful who your kids hang out with, right? I mean, I had times in my life where I had to tell my daughter, you can't go over to so-and-so's house. And she'd say, why? She's in our youth group, Dad. Her dad is a deacon at our church or whatever it would be. And I'd have to, I'd have to say, you're going to you're gonna have to trust me because I knew that the person they were being influenced with would have an effect on them. And at the time, they were simple. My kids were simple at one time. All right, so I had to set up some standards, some guidelines around, some guardrails to keep them on the road going on down the path of righteousness. And yet, even when they didn't want to do it and didn't understand it, and so we have to do that. Sometimes you, you may have yourself, you say, well, I, I just have a hard time. I'm making bad decisions. I'm doing this. Hey, how, when's the last time for, on your own you read the Bible? Because it'll give you understanding and wisdom. It'll make you wise. In fact, 2 Timothy Paul writes to Timothy and talks about how that uh, the, the word of God was made him wise unto salvation. The scriptures is what made him wise unto salvation. That's a, that's a great thing. So why should you have your children in church? Because you, you don't want them to remain simple, right? You, you want them to be wise. Why should you have, want to encourage other people to come and, and learn the scriptures? Because you don't want them to stay simple. There's too many people out there that claim Christ, but they're simple. They follow the crowd. They follow the circumstances and whatever they get themselves in. Wouldn't it be great that no matter what circumstance they got in, they'd be like Joseph and say, I'm not, I'm not simple. I'm not going for this Potiphar's wife. I'm going to be wise. Wouldn't that be great to have our young people like that? Wouldn't it be great to have our young people like Daniel? Hey, you're going to drink this wine, you're going to eat this stuff that you ain't supposed to eat as a Jewish man. They say, hey, I purposed in my heart, I'm not going to defile myself. He had convictions, and the convictions came from the Word of God. That, that'll help a simple person. All right? Well, let's pray, and we'll be dismissed in prayer, have an uh, invitation, and then we'll have our business meeting. Thank you for being here. Father, we thank you for this evening. We pray that you would speak to our hearts, help us not to give up. Uh, on people who we think are simple because if they are truly simple, they can, be, they can be influenced and persuaded to go in a right direction. They just need some people to come in their lives with, with a loving heart, some compassion. Maybe put an arm around them and say, listen, I love you and I don't want you to keep going in the direction you're going. And, and that compassion, as Jude said, would make a difference. And Maybe there's a grandchild or a great-grandchild that uh, some of our folks are thinking about, and their, 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 their grandchildren are simple. I pray that you would help them be wise. It's, it happens because of the Word of God. So we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Rick? Number 485. 485.